Mark Leibovich is in Washington. He's a CBS News contributor and chief national correspondent for the New York Times Magazine. Hi, Mark. Hi, Elaine. Good to be here. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Let's start with some news of the day. The unmasking of Trump team members by former National Security Advisor Susan Rice. First of all, how unprecedented is this? Well, I mean, if you listen to experts, I mean, at least who have served um, in this administration, it's not terribly unprecedented. What this does do, though, is it, I mean, it makes what I think had been a pretty straight ahead um, you know, claim by President Trump that, that most people in both parties were not, or most people in the Republican Party were not signing on to. This gives a piece of information, gives sort of a more um, sort of time-tested Obama-era boogie woman, um, you know, Susan Rice, something that, that people, surrogates for the Republican Party can grab onto. People like Rand Paul, who has been critical of President Trump in other contests, uh, are, you know, are now sort of seizing this. So in some ways, I mean, there's talk of some vindication from the White House. I don't know if a lot of people are buying that, but, but I think in so much as this was a black and white case of something that was very befuddling to a lot of people, um, you know, President Trump has at least something to grab onto now. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Rand Paul. The senators called this revelation a smoking gun. So does any of this redeem the president's still unsupported tweets about wiretapping? I mean, I assume there are some, many of his supporters will think that. I mean, we, we've seen, you know, for weeks now that poll, polling of his supporters, you know, finds that they buy this. They don't really need the kind of proof. They don't need a lot of the kind of examples. They don't need the kind of backup that people in the media, people, you know, in both parties have been looking for, certainly in Congress. So, yeah, I mean, his, his supporters have shown again and again that they're willing to stand by him. This will create more fodder for them. Let's talk about Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell filed a cloture motion to end debate on Gorsuch's nomination, setting up a so-called nuclear option showdown for Thursday. Break this down for us, Mark. What happens next in this battle? Well, I mean, I think, you know, what you're seeing here is a break of tradition. I mean, Republicans would argue, you know, I think rightly that, that Harry Reid was the first to do this. Democrats would argue that they, it's in, in their rights to do this because, look, the history is, especially the recent history with Judge Garland being nominated by President Obama and the Senate not moving on it and saying we're going to let the next president uh, pick his own Supreme Court justice or her support Supreme Court justice. Um, was, you know, worthy of, of this happening. I think there's really not a lot of scenarios where even if this option is, or especially if this option is implemented, uh, Judge Gorsuch will not be confirmed. I think what the question is going forward is what kind of precedent it will set for judicial nomination, nominations going through the Senate. Hmm. All right, let me ask you about health care. We know that the House Freedom Caucus has been in talks with Trump administration officials about changes to legislation that might perhaps get them to yes. How are these negotiations any different, Mark? Is this a game of optics basically here? What's the likeliness realistically of a new deal? You know, it's interesting that um, the, the notion of optics is interesting because none of us can really see anything. I mean, these are all kind of <laughs> back exactly channel right. conversations. Right. They're private negotiations, right? So, I mean, in some ways it's deja vu all over again and that, you know, no one really knows what's being discussed. No one knows, you know, how it's going to be scored. No one knows what moderates in the Republican Party are going to think. So, I mean, in so much as there are talks going on, I mean, I guess that's newsworthy. The question is, have they really moved this forward at all? Uh, I suppose you could say that, that because Vice President Pence has been involved, he seemed to have had some positive meetings with the Freedom Caucus. Maybe this is actually, you know, moving in a direction that could actually, you know, get closer this time. But again, we're, we're flying blind here, and I think a lot of people in Congress are flying blind because they don't really know what is being said in these private meetings. So, um, you know, you can certainly say stay tuned for this, but I don't see any signs of any major breakthrough. Yeah, that's a good point about the optics, though. Like, we see them walking through the halls of the Capitol, but we don't actually know right. what's being said. So an important point to keep in mind. All right, the Mark. walking of hallways is an important <laughs> optic in Washington, D.C. <laughs> that is, well. Don't underestimate that. Well, and, and let's be clear here. This is an administration that knows full well the power of pictures. So, you know, when it sure. comes to uh, trying to send a message that way, Way perhaps a demonstrate a willingness perhaps maybe that's right. part of a strategy but like you said who knows we will wait to see what actually comes of these talks um, meantime right. mark a, a two-week recess starts Thursday afternoon and when Congress returns the last week of the month they'll have to fight to keep the government open it seems unlikely this bill will pass before May what options does that leave well I mean <laughs> we've seen this movie before we just haven't seen it in the Trump administration I mean mm -hmm. the question I think is 
you know, in trying to sort of keep the government running, do the Republicans who control every branch of government, do they attach something involving Planned Parenthood, involving the building of a border wall that Democrats decide that they are going to go to the mat on and decide, you know, to hold this up for, and we have another government shutdown. I mean, we have seen historically that the party, you know, who controls Congress or the party in opposition um, has taken the blame for shutting down the government uh, that doesn't control the White House. Um, you know, the question is, would that hold in this case, are President Trump's, you know, very high negative ratings uh, something that could actually insulate Democrats from actually moving against him? There, you know, also, the, the sort of polls on Planned Parenthood and the wall are not definitive by any stretch. So I guess it sort of depends on how um, audacious Republicans are going to try to get in, in passing something that keeps the government open and how audacious in return Democrats are going to be to try to fight that. Finally, Mark, uh, the Washington Post first reported a secret meeting between a major Trump campaign donor uh, and brother of Betsy DeVos, Eric Prince, and an ally of Vladimir Putin. Uh, Prince has ties to people in President Trump's circle, including Steve Bannon. He was a frequent guest on Bannon's radio show. Regardless of whether it turns out there is, in fact, fire with this smoke, does this just sort of add to this drumbeat of news potentially connecting uh, the Trump officials with Russia? It, it is curious. <clears throat> it adds to what is, you know, a, a, a litany of some very curious at best meetings. I mean, I think, you know, smoke is probably still the operative metaphor here as opposed to fire. Um, again, it, it just raises all kinds of questions. The question is, you know, will most voters sort of be looking closely into what is a fairly downstream, um, albeit mysterious downstream, you know, meeting that, that is not a smoking gun by any stretch, but, but also is something that, you know, you sort of wonder why are all these things happening? Why were they happening on a QT? Why were they happening during the transition? Why were they happening with people who had such close ties to the administration? Um, you know, I think what we've seen in polls is that, that the electorate wants answers on this. I mean, there are some pretty solid poll numbers um, in favor of an independent investigator on this. So we'll see if this adds, um, you know, adds to that argument or not. But no, I mean, I would say certainly it's curious. Um, you know, we'll see what the next shoe to drop is. Hmm. All right. Mark Leibovich in Washington. Mark, thanks very much. Elaine, thanks.